This is the city, Los Angeles, California. In the 1890s, freight and passenger travel from the San Fernando Valley to the Los Angeles Plain came by wagon over the Coenga Pass. 30 years later, hundreds of automobiles turned out for the opening of the Mulholland Highway, bumper to bumper, a hint of the future. By 1928, there was one horseless carriage for every two and a quarter people. Today, there are over four million cars in the county, and seven freeways have replaced the dirt roads of yesteryear. With hundreds of thousands traveling these freeways daily, there are bound to be some problems. Most are accidents. Occasionally, they get more involved. That's when I go to work. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. August 12th, we were working the day watch out of Los Angeles Police Commission, Investigation Division. The boss is Captain George Milamore. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. We had a meeting with Captain Milamore. The commission had decided to crack down on dishonest tow truck operators. In the trade, they're known as wildcatters. Bill, Joe, what do you know about wildcatters? Freelance tow truck drivers cruise the streets and freeways looking for a tow job, a driver's license from DMV, and a rig to drive, and they're in business. Behind the wheel, they're subject to the same laws we all are, but some of them are writing their own business rules. Yes, sir, but there are plenty of good tow operators, honest men who do an honest job. Charge fair prices, help keep traffic moving, sometimes save lives. Correct, and the city needs every one of them. But it's a highly competitive business, even cutthroat. That means the bad as well as the good. Fortunately, the good outnumber the bad by far. But the bad spoil it for everybody. That's it. Whatever happened to the idea of a tow truck association, Captain? It's still an idea. Maybe someday tow truck owners will get together, establish business standards, police their own. We hope so. In the meantime, it's up to us. And that's where the official police garages fit in the picture. Right. Chief Redden has authorized a new regulatory program. From now on, OPG drivers will wear gray uniforms and this shoulder patch. They'll also wear a replica of this patch on their uniform caps. This way, any motorist who asks a police officer to call a tow truck will know he's getting help from one of our 16 licensed garages. Establish towing charges, standard rules of operation. That's right, and we'll inspect those 16 garages often. If any fail to measure up, we'll find others to take their place. It's only one problem. What's that, sir? 16 OPGs aren't enough. There are far too many wildcatters operating. The public's being swindled every day. Complaints from motorists. Everything from misrepresentations to gross overcharging. Hard to prove. You know it. Usually just within the law. But we've got a little leverage. Yes, sir. Tow trucks operate out of repair shops. That's where the big money is. Drivers work on a percentage of what they haul in. Yes, sir. The police commission issues permits to all the auto repair shops in Los Angeles. All right, sir. We'll get to work on these right away. Good. They're urgent. And Joe. Yes, sir. Don't forget what I said about that leverage. Use it. Six of the complaints given us by Captain Milamore had been made against the same tow truck operator, a man named John K. Anzo. All six had been made in the past month. 10.30 a.m., we began with the first complainant. Her name was Phoebe Kensington. She lived in an old apartment house in the 200 block on West Catalina Avenue. Yes. You're Mrs. Kensington, are you? I'm Miss Kensington. We're police officers. I wonder if we might talk to you. What about? You wrote a letter about a man who towed your car. Oh, yes. Wouldn't you like to sit down and talk about it, ma'am? Inside. Oh, well, my babies are asleep. 
In your letter, you said that you were towed from the Harbor Freeway. Is that right? Well, I had to turn sharply. One of those hippies cut right in front of me. I struck the fence. Mr. Anzo said it would cost $12 for towing my car and $30 to fix it. I wrote you that in the letter. Yes, ma'am, you did, but you didn't say whether you signed a contract. Contract? Yes, ma'am, for Anzo's services. Oh, yes, well, I suppose I did, but that didn't give him the right to do what he did. Well, what did he do, Miss Kensington? He fixed the wrong door. How's that, ma'am? I struck the fence on the right side. He repaired the door on that side, but claimed the door on the left side needed fixing, too. So he did. Cost me $30 more. Do you know how much $72 is to a woman in my position, young man? Yes, ma'am, I believe I do. Did you pay him? Well, he wouldn't let me have my car until I did. You'll get me my money back, won't you? I'm afraid we can't do that. But I don't understand. Well, you signed a contract. You paid him. All you can do now is file a civil suit. You mean go to court? Yes, ma'am. This is ridiculous. I complain to the police. I expect you to do something. Yes, ma'am. Instead, you do nothing except wake up my babies. a.m. The tow truck driver, John K. Anzo, had obviously cheated Miss Kensington, but he had not committed a crime that we could prosecute. We headed for the Hollywood address of the second complainant, Mrs. Perry Chance. Yeah, what do you want? We're looking for Mrs. Chance. Who wants? Police officers. Yeah, well, she ain't here. What is it, Faps? Ah, these guys say they're cops. Oh, you fellas hear about the letter? Yes, ma'am, that's right. Come on in. I'm Margaret Chance. This is my husband. Everybody calls him Fats. What letter? I filed a complaint with the law. About what? About 250 bucks for hauling that heap of yours. There's no complaint. Forget it. Go shave and put on a shirt. There's no complaint. The car was mine. I was driving and nobody got it hurt. You were as potted as a geranium and you know it. The first solid week's work you get in three months, and what happens? You tank up and wrap your car around a telephone pole. Along comes Anzo, and you fork over 250 bucks to haul you and your car in. 250 bucks, cash! Is that how it happened, sir? You better believe it's how it happened. This Anzo character's no dummy. I figure he knows a live one when he sees it. Hooks up and hauls away before the police show. That way my husband beats a drunk driving rap, doesn't he? Mr. Chance? Anzo, I never heard of him. Did you pay him in cash? I just said I never heard of nobody named Anzo. Where's your car now? I, uh, sold it. I sold it. What was left of it. Fats does extra work at the studios when he can get it. Things are pretty slow these days. We have to eat. There's only one thing I can't figure out. Yes, ma'am. Anzo, how do you get to the wreck so fast? There are plenty of tow truck drivers who cruise the city looking for somebody in trouble. They're called wildcatters. That's what Anzo is. Most of them have shortwave radio receivers in their trucks. They can monitor ambulance calls, even tune in on police bands. Ah. Ah. Officer? Yes, ma'am. Anzo, you'll get him? We'd have more chance if your husband would testify. He won't, but I will. Your evidence is just hearsay. Anyway, it was a cash deal. Anza would most likely deny it. He's got all the angles figured, hasn't he? No, ma'am. Not all of them. What do you mean? Six people sent in complaints. You're only the second one we've seen. The next victim had written her letter in Spanish. We called in and asked Danny Galindo to meet us at the complainant's place of business. 1.20 p.m., we arrived where Maria Aruba worked. She was a cook in a tamale house near 61st and Santa Fe. Along with Danny Galindo, we interrogated her. Tell her we got her letter. We'd like to help her. Okay. Somos de la policía. Hemos recibido su noticia. Estamos aquí para servirle. Sí, muchas gracias. She says she understands. All right, good. Now, according to her letter, she says a man driving a yellow truck offered to help her, and he asked her to sign something. Cuando usted tuvo el accidente, el señor que estaba manejando el camión amarillo, ¿qué le preguntó por su firma? Sí, claro, tuve que firmarle un papel. Maria Aruba told us Anzo insisted she sign a piece of paper before he tow her car from the scene of a minor accident. Although she couldn't understand what he was saying, she knew what he wanted her to do. 
Later, she learned she had signed a blank contract and had to pay him $75 before he'd release her car. She also said Anzo had not repaired it. He had simply pulled a bent fender away from a wheel. She was then able to drive her car without difficulty. If we could prove Anzo had persuaded Maria Aruba to sign a blank contract, we might have a case. The charge would be business conduct, contrary to the general welfare of the public. We decided to talk to Anzo. 2.30 p.m., we arrived at Anzo's garage. One out of 78, Roger. Frequency 19, clear. One out of 26. One out of 26. See the woman, a prowler there now. John Anzo? He's not here. You expecting him? Could be. Police officers. What's the beef? What makes you think there's a beef? Well, you're fuzz, ain't you? We'd like to talk to Anzo. Like I said, he ain't here. When do you expect him? You gonna lean on him? That depends. Well, it figures. How's that? A guy like Jake tries to help people when they need help, and what does it get him? Suppose you tell us, mister. Name's Jones, Eddie Jones. I fix cars. Jake pulls them in, and I fix them. We're in business. Private enterprise. JKA towing and auto repair. You Anzo's partner? I just fix cars. He's moving up fast, Jake. Opens up a new place in a couple of months. Two more trucks, maybe three. Is that so? You cops are all alike. Jake started from nothing. He was broke, flat. He built this from sweat and blood. Long hours, sometimes 18, 20 a day. I saw it happen, all of it. Now you want to bust him for the way he looks after people in trouble? You said it, mister. We didn't. Eddie? Can I help you, gentlemen? You John Anzo? Right. Police commission investigation. We'd like a word with you. Well, why not? Let's go into the office. Eddie, busted radiator and some body work. Order's on the seat. Come on. You always monitor the police calls, do you? There's no law against it, is there? There is if you do it for gain. No, sir. Not me. Did you tow and repair a car for a woman by the name of Maria Aruba? I don't know. I'd have to check my records. Would you do it now? Sure. Aruba, you say? That's right. Might help if I knew when. Within the last 30 days. Business has been pretty good. I'm fixing to move. This place has had it. Aruba, you said? First name, Maria. Oh, sure. I remember. Couldn't speak much English. We had a go-around about the price. Guess she must have filed a complaint or something. Yes, yeah, sir, she did. I'm sorry to hear that. Here, see for yourself. That's her signature authorizing the tow and repairs. How much repair work did you do? Well, one fender was smashed down against the wheel, the radiator needed some help, and a headlight was busted. And you took care of it? No. A day or two after I towed her in, she shows up here with a nephew, I think she said he was. Smart kid. Claimed I made her sign a blank contract. He said they'd take the car right then without repairs. I pulled out the fender and gave him the car. For $75. Pretty expensive tow, wasn't it? Well, it's all there. Flares at the scene of the accident, check motor at scene of accident, hook up and tow, two-day storage. Well, now it still figures high, doesn't it? Look, the kid tried to get tough. I had a contract. If we'd have been decent about it, we might have come to terms. Eddie had a little talk with the nephew that he decided to pay. Do you keep all your records here? Yes, I do. Why? Would you mind showing them to us? Federal and state tax, business license, county license, board of equalization. Help yourself. I've got nothing to hide. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I've got to make a living. Well, don't you want to stay here while we go through these things? Why? I trust you. The records of JKA towing and auto repair indicated that John Anzo had opened for business 14 months ago with an initial capitalization of $2,000. Anzo was listed as the sole owner. Several other names were listed as salaried employees with normal deductions for tax purposes. Among these was the mechanic we had talked to, Edward L. Jones, shop manager. Anzo maintained a checking account at a nearby branch of the Mercantile National Bank. His record showed a balance of several thousand dollars in that account. 5.10 p.m. I went to report our progress to Captain Milamore. Bill stopped off at R&I to request a possible make on John Anzo. It was a long shot, but we needed more than we had, and we knew it. All right, how are you doing on the Aruba complaint? Well, we haven't got much so far. Just Anzo's claim that Maria Aruba spoke a little English when she can't speak a word of it. You're on Anzo's original request for a permit with a commission? Yes, sir, we did. There's nothing out of order. Lists himself as sole owner, you know, the usual. He's batting a thousand. Yes, sir, he is so far. A woman signs a contract knowing full well what she's doing and then stands still for a $30 overcharge. Another woman signs something without knowing what it is, but pays anyway. A drunk pays off because he's afraid of the truth. They all make Anzo as legal as traveler's aid. And there's no way of knowing how many others have been victimized without even writing a complaint. 
Misrepresentation, not comporting with the public welfare aren't easy to prove. That's the trouble. Yes, sir, I know. We need evidence strong enough to stand up before a hearing examiner. It's your job to get it. Yes, sir. Captain? Bill? R and I ran the name John K. Answer, Joe. He's clean. Only on paper. All right. Yes, sir. Prove it. Thursday, August 15th, 9.20 a.m. We interviewed everyone who had filed a complaint against John Anzo. We failed to find anything that could be used as evidence against him. The local newspapers had taken an interest in the Wildcatters, too. They sent one of their feature writers to get the details. Then anyone involved in a crack-up can ask a police officer to radio for a tow from an official police garage. No, they don't have to be in an accident, Vince. Maybe they've stalled, can't get their engine started, out of gas, flat tire. Anytime they need assistance away from home. Sort of gives the OPGs an edge over the competition, doesn't it? Well, the OPGs are all owned and run by private businessmen. There's no financial tie-in with the department. If there's any edge at all, it's because they're willing to play it straight, meet department standards, and not overcharge. I see. Every official police garage is inspected, checked out at regular intervals. A garage that doesn't cut it just isn't an OPG anymore. Another one takes its place. You said there are 16. One for every geographical police division. Now, when the number of divisions are increased, so will the number of OPGs. Yeah. Finding other garages that come up to OPG standards won't be hard, because most of them do. What's this dodge I hear some tow drivers use? Telling a motorist he'll get a ticket if he's stalled on a freeway. Scare psychology to sell a fast tow. It's rough being stuck on a freeway. Some wildcatters milk it for all it's worth. Like how much? Well, five dollars to change a tire, ten for a short can of gas. What's that, a short can? All right, now suppose you run out of gas on a freeway. I leg it to the nearest station. Not if you're a woman, you don't. Along comes a wildcatter. He always has a five-gallon can of gasoline. He sells you the gas for $10, but he only pours two gallons in your tank. Suppose I don't want an OPG tow. That's your privilege. OK, I'm dealing with a wildcatter. Are there any rules I should follow? Don't agree to a tow without getting a filled-in contract that lists all charges. Don't allow your car to be hauled away until you know exactly where it's being taken. Shouldn't be any trouble about that. Tow trucks are required to have their address and phone numbers painted on both sides, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. But some freelance drivers have working arrangements with more than one repair garage. By the time you locate your car, chances are you've run up extra charges for storage. Another thing. Yeah? Don't let a wildcatter look under your hood. Why not? That look will cost you ten bucks. Excuse me. Talk to you in a minute, Joe. Can it? Thanks. Thanks, Joe. I think I got all I need. Right, Vince. I'll see you. Crime report from Ted Caudill, AID. They picked up something on JKA towing. The complainant's an OPG driver. Is that right? He was summoned to an accident this morning at 7.30 by a patrolman out of Wilshire Division. Seems he reached the scene the same time as a JKA driver. There was an argument over whose tow it was. The JKA guy threw a punch, decked the OPG driver. Charged him with 242. JKA driver make the tow, did he? Sure did. He's named here in the report. Edward L. Jones. One more thing. What's that? They found a JKA business card on one of the accident victims. Tow drivers usually leave their card with a motorist, don't they? It's considered proof the motorist agreed to a tow. That's not unusual, is it? This time it might be. Well, how do you figure? The victim. He's in the morgue. We put in a call to the county coroner's office and requested a full report on the accident victim. If we could prove the JKA business card had been placed on the body after death, we'd have all the evidence we needed for the commission to move against JKA and to add a charge of grand theft auto. We talked to Eddie Jones. You just missed him. We want to talk to you. I'm busy. Monday, you told us you fix cars. Anzo pulls them in and you repair them. Is that right? Your memory's OK. You never drive the truck. I got a license. You want to see? Does that mean you drive the truck sometimes? Jake drives days. Sometimes I work nights into the morning. I don't sleep so good, so it's against the law. Ever hear of assault and battery? The crumb was moving and on my toe. You ever been in trouble before? What kind of trouble is that? Sure, I belted him. Guy's got to stand up for his rights, don't he? Nobody ever handed me nothing. You said it was your toe. Can you prove it? I gave him my card. You gave him your card? Sure, the guy who belongs to this. How'd you make the accident? Radio. I was cruising, heard the call. The driver of this car, what did he say to you when you gave him your card? Nothing. He was in a bad way. I told him I'd take care of his car. He looked at me and nodded, that's all. Just sort of nodded his head. And that's your story, is it? It's the truth. How much do you have invested in this business, Eddie? How much? Fourteen months. Fourteen months, that's all. I don't get you. Monday, you told us Anzo was broke when he opened up here. His records show he started out with $2,000. Now, where'd he get it? How do I know? Ask him. We will, but we thought you'd know. Yeah? Why? 
your interest in the business, Eddie. It shows. Eleven thirty a.m. We wanted to talk to Anzo, but first we had to check out a couple of things. While Bill contacted the county coroner for the report on the accident victim, I called R and I to request a run on Eddie Jones for a possible criminal record. All right, Jones, Edward Lawrence, three six five seven Denker. Yeah, that's right. Male cock, gray black, hazel, five ten, one hundred and sixty five. Seven ten twenty five. Right. Thank you. About seven forty five. Uh huh. No chance at all. Thanks. Coroner's office says the victim died on the way to Central Receiving. Approximately seven forty five. Well, the AID report shows Jones slugged the OPG driver at seven thirty, so the victim could have been alive when Jones gave him his business card. Yeah, but didn't Jones claim the victim looked at him and nodded his head? That's what he said. Coroner's office says the victim was rendered unconscious at the moment of impact. Can the coroner prove that the victim never regained consciousness? You'll swear an affidavit to it. Tow truck drivers follow a pattern. They usually work the same general area. It took us 20 minutes to locate John Anzo. 12.50 p.m. While Bill stayed with the car for a possible call from communications on the Eddie Jones R&I we had requested, I talked to John Anzo for the second time in four days. We appreciate your cooperation, Anzo. I'll give you all the help I can, Sergeant. Maybe you can clear up a couple of things. Fire away. What do you know about Eddie Jones? I know I couldn't get along without him. Well, he said I ought to ask you something. Like what? Like where you got the $2,000 to start in business. Well, I don't have to tell you that. No, sir, you don't have to tell me anything. But if you're clean, you should be as anxious as I am to prove it. Now, we've had six complaints about you, seven with the one this morning. That many complaints deserve investigation, don't they? What about this morning? Eddie Jones assaulted another tow truck driver. Oh, Eddie's got a temper, but he must have had a reason. He said he did. Now, Anzo, did you get the money from him? The 2000 Yes, sir. From Eddie? What if I did? That'd make him your partner, wouldn't it? I suppose it would. Is he? Is he what? Your partner. I don't think that's any of your business. Your application for permit with the police commission lists you as the sole owner of JKA. Now, if you have a partner, a silent partner like Eddie, and you fail to show it on your application, your permit can be revoked. You know that, don't you? On what grounds? Fraudulent application. That's a technicality, Sergeant. Besides, I haven't said Eddie was my partner. Maria Aruba doesn't speak any English, not one word. Now, how did you explain that contract to her? She seemed to understand what it was all about. That drunk you took for everything he had on him. What technicality made that job worth 250 bucks? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the way you and your partner do business. You know, uh, suddenly I can't understand a word you say. I'll let my attorney do my listening for me. You do that, Anzo. Call just came in on tack two. The R&I on Eddie Jones. Six priors. Felony assault and kidnapping. Both out of state dismissed. Four subsequent arrests in Los Angeles dating back five years. All 242 and 415. All convictions. Sounds like Greek to me. Well, we'll do more for you than you did for the Aruba woman. What's that? We'll see that you get an interpreter. <laughs> The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On September 9th, a hearing was held before the Police Commission Examiner, City of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that hearing. Evidence presented at the Police Commission hearing firmly established the fact that Edward L. Jones was a partner in JKA Towing and Auto Repair. The hearing examiner's recommendation to the police commission led to final revocation of Anzo's permit on the grounds that he conducted business in a matter not comporting with the public welfare. Charges of grand theft auto and assault are pending against Edward L. Jones. The governor of the state of California signed into law Assembly Bill 1650, which now gives the authority to all local police departments in the state to regulate all tow car service operation, including the licensing thereof.